A lot of people tend to seek love from family, friends, sometimes lovers. But the truth is, nobody can truly love you the way you deserve to be loved except you. Yes, and quite frankly, no one should. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the concept of self-love and I'm going to be showing you what it truly means to love yourself. Keep watching. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your girl once again. My name is Aimee, just in case you're here for the first time. If you're not here for the first time, then you, my love, are an OG. And I just want to say thank you to all the OGs in the house. Thank you so much for sticking around. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the concept of self-love. All over YouTube are videos that talk about self-love, how to love yourself and stuff. Whether that is good, it's a good thing that... You know, a lot of people are bringing awareness to this self-love thing. But self-love is actually a very ambiguous concept that a lot of people think they understand, but they do not to a large extent. Because, let's face it, if really each of us, if really every one of us in the world, everyone in society actually understands the concept of self-love, the world will be a better place. Believe me, the world will be a better place because the society is a mirror of our individual self-love. Like, society is a mirror of our self-love, our collective self-love. So if you find that society is in chaos, you find that things are going haywire, then it means that something is wrong with our self-love. So today, I really want to unpack this topic. I really want to, you know, dissect this concept of self-love just so we know what we are really talking about because trust me a lot of people do not know what they talk about when you say self-love i love myself they don't know and it's not their fault usually when i do most of these um topics what i like to do is to check history and to find out how certain concepts evolved who evolved them how did they start um who started it and stuff like that because i find that it really helps me to understand certain concepts and why it was introduced the concept of self-love is not different and i found a historical book that really explains to me this concept of self-love and it's a greek book the reason why i really love this concept of self-love as seen in the greek book is that it gives a lot of context to what love actually means now it says love your neighbor as yourself which simply means that you cannot love your neighbor except you first love yourself so you can only love your neighbor to the degree that you love yourself you cannot love babe you cannot love boo you cannot love your children you cannot love your spouse you can only love them to the degree that you love yourself that's what this simply means at the beginning of this video, I talked about the fact that society is a mirror of our individual and our collective self-love. So the reason why we see the kind of things that we see in society today, people killing their neighbors, causing troubles for their family members and society at large, is because the concept, their individual um, concept of self-love is broken. There's something, there's a crookedness to it, let me put it that way. There's something off, there's something wrong with it. That's, this is the explanation. A lot of people do not love themselves. That's why society is the way it is. Society is just mirroring our self-love. We'll be doing society great service if we understand what self-love actually means. And if you learn as an individual, if we all learn as individuals to love ourselves. Self-love from the word self-love means one being able to love themselves, right? Wrong. Contrary to popular belief that self-love is you being able to love yourself, I find that that concept is actually not wholesome enough because if you really think about it, self-love is not, it doesn't come from self because you cannot love yourself. It's outsourced. Nobody, no human has the ability to love themselves. No human has the ability to love self. I don't understand what you're talking about. How can you say self-love is not you being able to love yourself? Relax. I'm here for you. Now, 
When I say self-love is outsourced, what do I mean? I mean that for you to be able to love yourself adequately, you will need to tap into a source that is bigger than you in order for you to actually be able to have self-love. Now, I know that a lot of you are saying, I mean, you're confusing me. I mean, you're confusing me. You said that I cannot adequately love myself the way I should. You said that self-love doesn't mean me actually loving myself. So what then is self-love and how can someone really, you know, tap into it? How can someone really access self-love if it doesn't mean me being able to love myself? Now, let me tell you, the only way to really love yourself the way you truly deserve to be loved is when you are able to awaken your spirituality. But when I say um, awaken your spirituality, I'm not talking about becoming religious now. It's not you become religious. Because me personally, I'm not a religious person. I'm more of a spiritual person. And the reason why I say um, go for for spirituality rather than religion is that religion actually requires you to go through the motions of activities just do stuff that your heart is not connected to you are not you are not your heart is not what you are doing you are just doing it for doing sake you cannot be spiritual you cannot do spirituality in without your heart you cannot do spirituality absent-minded you cannot do spirituality without being fully committed spirituality will require your body spirit soul everything about you your mind it will require all of you but religion doesn't necessarily need you committed it just it just needs you to do certain things that you need to do just keep doing activities not getting to the crux of the matter it's just you doing stuff that you are not committed to that your heart is not in spirituality will require all of you and that's why i say go for spirituality rather than religion. why is spirituality point so important it is so important because it allows you or helps you reconnect to your creator that's the first thing it helps you connect with god now once you are able to connect with god what that does for you is that it helps you to um, build a relationship with God so your connection to the spiritual allows your relationship with God to be built the only way to become friends with somebody is when you have access to the person when you begin to talk to the person both of you begin to talk to each other that's how relationships are built that's how you become friends with somebody that's how all kinds of relationship whether friendship relationship um, um, relationship between spouses that's how it's built you cannot build a relationship without having access, without speaking, without interacting with people, without connecting with them. So you're being able to awaken your spirituality, allows you to connect with God. And secondly, it allows you to build a relationship with him. Once you're able to build a relationship with God, there is the kind of love that is produced. Love is produced in that relationship. And the love that is produced in that relationship begins to flow into your own life. When that love flows into your life, that's when you can really say, I love myself. Because that love is what teaches you how to love yourself. Because when you think about it, that love is not, doesn't come from you. That love is not your love. That love is God's love flowing into your life and teaching you how to love yourself teaching you what love truly means. So if you've not experienced this type of love, if you've not experienced the love that comes from your relationship with God, then you are not going to be able to love yourself. You are not going to be able to love your boo. You are not going to be able to love your bae. You are not going to be able to love your children, your neighbors. So that's why I said in the beginning of this that our collective self-love reflects in our society our, the, the, our society mirrors our individual and collective self-love because you see how this love that I've explained has a ripple effect you have a relationship with God that relationship produces love that flows into your life when you, it flows into your life you begin to love yourself you know what it means to love yourself once you love yourself you can love your neighbor because you only love your neighbor to the degree that you love yourself. 
So you love your neighbor. And because you love your neighbor, you do not do anything that will hurt your neighbor. You do not do things that will cause your neighbor harm, evil, and all of you, and, all, and what have you. But when you've not experienced this kind of love, you cannot truly really love boo. You cannot love be. You cannot love your children. You cannot love your neighbors. You cannot love your family members. You can try to love them, but you cannot love them the way they deserve. You cannot love them to the degree that they are supposed to be loved because your self-love concept, what you understand by self-love, is not actually self-love. So do, you, do we see why it's so important for each and every one of us to fully understand, grasp what it truly means to love yourself? It's, it's, it's so important. I cannot emphasize this enough. It's so important for us to love ourselves. And the only way to do that is when we reconnect we are waking the spiritual we connect with the creator access that love that can only come from the relationship that is built with him that is the only way you can truly love yourself that's the only way i can truly love myself that's the only way i can love a spouse that's the only way i can love my kids that's the only way i can love my family that's the only way i can love my friends that's the only way. If you if you have not accessed this kind of self love, you can try to love these people, but you will not love them to the degree that they deserve. You will not love them the way they deserve to be loved. You will love them the way you think they should be loved. If you're still here with me, please give this video a thumbs up, just so YouTube is able to push it to other people, and so that other people can also benefit from what you're benefiting from. Thank Plenty you. Is the way it is today because of not only the fact that people do not love themselves it's also because of the fact that the family unit the family as an institution is under attack you see a lot of teenage pregnancies a lot of single moms a lot of families where the father is absent and that may be because he chose to be absent or maybe something happened to him along the way he passed on and all of that if that's what happened to you i'm very sorry about that um, I would suggest that if you can get a father figure, maybe a pastor or a grandfather, stepdad or something that you can look up to because here's what a lot of people do not understand. The father figure in a family is very important. The father figure is very important. That's why I do not like it when I see in the West that, you know, it's um, single parenting um being a single mom is glorified to a large extent. I see a family where it's just the mom in the house and she's raising this, she's raising her kids in the absence of a father. I know that once upon a time in America, black Americans, African Americans were paid, the women were paid to have their the husbands or the fathers out of the house. They were paid to raise their kids on their own. So at a point in, in America, single parents and single moms, the concept of, of single moms was glorified. And even up till now, you still have a lot of single moms all around. And what that does is that it robs children the role that a father plays in their lives. And I don't think that we have understood this thing very well. I don't think a lot of us really understand that the father in a in, in a family setting is a very important figure as much as the mom is important a father figure in the house in a home is very very important and we cannot take away we can't take this importance away we can't take it away we cannot pay it away we cannot we just cannot do anything about it the father figure in the family is very important. Let me explain why. It is because the father gives identity to children. Your father is the person that is supposed to give you identity. The reason why a lot of girls are in dysfunctional relationships, constantly seeking love and approval from men who keep breaking their hearts, who cannot really give them the kind of love that they deserve. And the reason for that most of the time is because those ladies lack self-identity they lack identity their fathers were not there to point to their lives in the formative years of their lives they never heard 
their father say i love you because the i love you word is a very big one it's a big deal in the child of every in the it's a big deal in the life of every child it's a big deal in the life of a girl child it's also as important in a boy's life as well but when a girl child doesn't have access to these words if a girl was never told by her father i love you i care about you and all those kinds of words that build up a child that really make the child know that oh I'm, I'm loved i have someone who actually loves me that child is going to grow up into a man into a woman and is going to constantly subconsciously begin to seek love and approval from other people so that's why you keep seeing those kind of girls getting into wrong relationships with men getting into relationships with people that do not value them and all of that and that will continue until that person gets help until that person is completely healed like i said the identity of every child comes from their father so if the father is absent if the father is not available that child is going to have issues with identity so that's why it's very important the father figure in the house is very important now let me explain this father giving identity thing more now another word for father is abba and abba means source and means sustainer for something to be the source of something else it means that that thing is responsible for the production of the other and when something is the source of something it's responsible for sustaining that thing now, if we say that the father is the source of a child, it simply means that everything about that child comes from the father. So whether it be the love that is present in that child, whether it be the identity of that child, whether it be what that child knows he's supposed to be, supposed to become, comes from the father. That child or that thing cannot live, cannot be sustained in the absence of whatever source it. So if Abba is absent in a child's life, if the father in the family is absent in the child's life, it simply means that the person, that child is going to lack sustenance. So whether that sustenance means love, whether it means finances, whether it means whatever it means, it just means that to an extent, the child is going to lack some very vital and important things that are supposed to be present in his life or her life so that's why i said that when the, the the father is absent in the child's life the child is losing out on a very important thing in his or her life and that's why a person being able to reconnect with the spiritual is a very vital factor in a person loving himself or loving herself very vital factor the same way we see that for someone to really get back their identity that person gets help until that person is completely healed and usually when someone is going through that process of healing most times they need to be a father figure introduced into the person's life so whether it be a pastor whether it be a stepdad whether it be you know the grandfather an uncle that steps into that role of a father whether it even be god because god is our father generally everybody's father god is our father so until that role is occupied by a father figure a child a person is going to keep searching for their identity going to keep searching for their source going to keep searching for their sustenance from external factors so you're still going to be looking outside of yourself for love you're still going to be looking outside of yourself for your purpose you are going to be looking outside of yourself for basic things that you need in your life because the role of a father in your life is missing whether it be the role of god in your life because the role god has to play in your life enables you to love yourself like i've said gives you your purpose and one of these days we're going to talk about purpose and all of that but is your connection, your 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 awakening of the spiritual, your reawakening of the spiritual that allows you to actually know what your purpose is and walk in it. The reason why a lot of people do not love themselves and do not even have the ability to love themselves. Yes, they can claim that oh I love myself, self-love, this, that, that. 
they can claim all of that but the reason why they do not have the ability to actually love themselves the way they deserve is because they've not allowed themselves to be loved by the creator they've not allowed themselves to be loved by the father we have a father in god god is abba he's our source he's our sustainer he's our creator and anything that is a source of something we came from him that's why he's our source and everything that sources something is responsible for sustaining that thing so if god sourced us it means that he's the one responsible for sustaining us so he's the one that is that has the ability to give us self-love so if you if you do not if you have not allowed yourself to be loved by that person if you've not gotten your source of love from the creator then it's going to be impossible for you to love yourself it's going to be important you can try to love yourself yes you can try to be all self-love but you cannot love yourself to the degree that you should be loved except you've gotten a grasp of that kind of love and you cannot even think of being of, of loving someone else except you've actually been you've, you've actually experienced that kind of love now, the reason why a person will not be able to love themselves by themselves is because they've not allowed themselves to be loved by God. Now, the love of God is available. Whether you know it or not, God loves you. Whether you are aware of it or not, God loves all of us. God loves his children. The same way, if you have a father, if you know the kind of love your father has for you, especially for those people that have, that, you know, have or has ever had the love of their father being expressed to them but the only way you can now begin to love yourself is when you become aware of that love you only the love of god only flows into your life in this way that it becomes self-love if you become aware of the love that god has for you that's the way you you begin to you know walk in self-love you cannot walk in self-love in the absence of your knowledge of the love that God has for you. The reason why that is, like I've said and I've been saying, is that that love that he has for you is what produces the love in you. That's what produces what we call self-love. If you do not love yourself, you cannot love nobody else. You cannot love your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your children, your spouses. You cannot love your family members. You can't love nobody. Do we now see why the, the Greek book says love your neighbor as yourself? Because that love has a multiplier effect. Because by the time you love yourself, you are able to love somebody else. And that love goes into society and makes society a better place. Do we now understand? Do we see where we are going with this? But love keeps no record. Love keeps no record of wrong. Love keeps no record of evil doings so even when your neighbor comes to you and does something wrong with you the this kind of love that we're talking about this self-love that comes from god's love will not allow you to do something wrong back to that person by retaliating so you think about it this thing that i want to do to my neighbor because it was done to me or for whatever reasons if it's done to me how will i feel about it how what impact will it have on my life what will be the effect in my own life? So you think about it relative to yourself. And if you feel, if you, if after looking at it and if you see that it will not be beneficial to you, self-love requires, this kind of love that we'll talk about requires that you don't do that kind of thing to the person. Now, when you don't retaliate, what that does is that your neighbor does not have anything to work with. And because the person doesn't have anything to work with, the whatever contention, whatever you know, fight or whatever evil that was supposed to happen, whatsoever conflict that was supposed to occur as a result of that will not be able to take place because your neighbor has nothing to work with. When that happens, society is peaceful, society is happier. People are not dying because um, their neighbor decided to end their life and shorten their lifespan. Do you understand? So we see how self-love, this concept of self-love is actually 
very important so whenever somebody says oh self-love i love myself you really need to ask what does self-love truly mean you need to ask the person to explain to you their concept of self-love because a lot of people do not understand a lot of people think they do because from the from the word self-love it's it looks very self-explanatory but in reverse is the case so i hope this video has been very beneficial to you i hope this video has been very helpful to you i hope i've been able to convince you i hope i've been able to you know bring clarity to the self-love concept and what it truly means for a person to say they love themselves i hope you truly understand this concept and if you have any questions or you have something you'd like to share as it relates to self-love please leave it in the description box let's let's talk about it or if i have answers to your questions i can answer your questions and yes don't forget to um give this video a thumbs up like it so that youtube can also share it with other people and they can benefit from what you're benefiting from and um yes in my next video i will talk about how to really love yourself and maybe even share how I'm learning to love myself and becoming a better version of myself as a result of um, being able to tap into my spirituality and, and you know, understand this whole self-love package. So, yes, I'll see you in my next one.